Well, hello, third graders. I've got a lesson planned for you today. And in your math books, page 593, we're at lesson 10.6. And this lesson is all about generating data using measurement and then taking that, applying it to a line plot so that you can come to some conclusion about that data. So the you know, first thing we want to talk about is being able to measure. By now, I hope you all know how to measure, but I'll tell you what, I am sometimes just absolutely amazed that people don't know how to measure things. We're going to be using the American standard, inches, although most rulers today come divided into inches and divided into the metric. We're going to be using the inches. And a, a ruler is much like a number line. It starts at 1, goes to 2, goes to 3, goes to 4. So it's just like a number line. So if you want to draw a number line, Put measurements on that line, collect your data by measuring things, then you can come to some conclusion about what that data actually might mean. Now, we're all used to a ruler, and rulers come in a lot of different varieties and sizes. They even come in the form of tape measures. This is kind of cool because it's got standard measurement on one side, metric on the other. Metric's a lot easier, but for the sake of this lesson, we're just going to be using standard measurement. So let's talk about a ruler. What is a ruler and how does it work? Well, imagine a ruler is a number line. It starts at zero, then it goes to one, two, three, and each increment of this measurement is equivalent to one inch. So if I wanted to measure something in inches, a ruler like this would be perfect. In between each inch, it's divided into additional segments. In other words, they break it down into smaller parts. And they do that so you can be a little more accurate. So if you get right to the middle, that would be one half inch. Likewise, they split that again. And when they split it in between those measurements, each one of those is a quarter inch. And one, two, three, four. There are four quarter inches in one inch. Four times one quarter would be four over four, which is equivalent to one. So if I wanted to measure something, and let's just, as an example, Standard eraser. I want to know how long it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this eraser and I'm going to put it on the board here and draw a line. That line is the same length as the eraser. So now let's measure it. Now, since the tape measure is the easiest thing to read on this camera, what I will do is I will take my measuring tool and I will hold it up against the line and I can see that the length of this eraser is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's not quite 6 but it falls right on the third quarter. So it would be 
five full inches, and then three quarters of an inch. So the measurement for that eraser is five and three quarter inches. Now, if I have a bunch of things and I want to gather some data about that bunch of things by measuring them, now what I want to show you is how you do this using a number line. So let's make a number line. And actually, let me direct you, let's do a problem. On page 596, problem number five, and they have a plot already put together there for you. So I'm going to duplicate that on the board right now. And that plot measurement goes from one inch to four inches. So I'm going to make my number line. I'm going to start at one. I'm going to end at four. So that means there's four inches in between there. So we're going to split it in half twice. So this would be two. This would, hang on a second here. Let me do this again. I want to make sure that it's real easy for you to understand. There's one. Two, three, and then four. They break it into then half sexes. So we've got, let me do that with a different color here for you. So this on our number line would be one and one half. Then it goes to two. Then it goes to two and one half. Then it goes to three. It goes to three and one half. And then finally, four. Now, let's look at the problem. Tara has a magnet collection from places that she's visited. She measures the length of the magnets to the nearest half inch, which is why we've broken our number line into half inch segments. She records the data in the number line plot. Are more magnets longer than two and a half inches or shorter than two and a half inches? So the question is, are more magnets less than two and a half inches or more than two and a half inches. So let's see what she's got. We're going to plot it here. And according to her plot, she's got one at one inch. She's got two at inch and a half. She's got three at two inches, two at two and a half inches, four at three. One at three and a half, and two at four. Now, this is our magic number here two and one half inches. We're looking for the number like this. How many are below two and a half? How many are above two and a half? So we just count. This is two and a half, so we're not going to count two and a half because it wants to know how many are less than two and a half and how many are more than two and a half. So less than two and a half, we've got 
One, two, three, four, five, six. More than two and a half, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, are there more magnets less than two and a half or more than two and a half? You're right, there are more that are greater than two and a half inches. And that's how you use a plot, data, and come to a conclusion to a question. Now, on pages 597 and 598, you'll find your homework. I uh, know. Homework. Anyhow, take a look at that homework. Work through the other problems on the, uh, in the chapter. Get your ruler out. Measure some things. You know, measure stuff around your house. It's not that tough. Learn how to read the ruler. Learn how to read the segments of the ruler. That's our lesson for today, third graders. Hey, stay smart, stay safe. We'll see you again.